So, here we have the uh, Mathematica file for our case uh, study. So, the first, first, I put here the, the solution for the position problem. Okay, so the output angle phi as a function as a function of input angle theta. When this constant c is uh, the thing I have there, sine of pi over n to the power minus one. Okay, then velocity I do by differentiating. So I am getting this thing, which in all probability is the same as the green stuff I have here. And then I do the acceleration by differentiating again. Okay, so I have the equations, and now let us look at the results. How the results look like? So this is the, our case study, number of stations 20, okay? So this is the, the situation for, for the machine tool in the lab, which hopefully next week everybody will see. So I am plotting the, the position uh, in degrees for, for, for one cycle of the input, okay? So remember that one cycle of the input wheel results, or full revolution, results in, a, in one slot movement of the output wheel. So in this case, uh, 360 divided by 20, which is 18 degrees, okay? And this is appro approximately what we can see here, right? We have a full range of motion of the input that results in the motion of the output from about minus 9 to plus, plus 9 degrees, which is 18 degrees motion range, which makes sense. Okay? So probably this makes sense. Now let us look at velocity. Okay, so I'm plotting velocity. Uh, assuming that the input velocity or angular velocity is equal to 1. Okay, so constant angular velocity 1. So if you have big A, you just scale up. So one thing which is good is that velocity at entry and at exit is 0. Right? And this is the, the result of our geometric requirement. We are requiring the, the pin to go into the slot at the right angle, okay? And therefore, it goes in smoothly, which means the driven wheel starts the cycle with zero velocity, accelerates, and then slows down, and at the end of cycle, the pin exits the slot while the driven wheel or the star wheel has zero velocity, okay? And it must be so, because if we require it here, a non-zero velocity, it would mean that the transition from the journal bearing mode to the slider crank mode would require infinite acceleration. Jump in velocity would require infinite acceleration, which according to Newton's law would require infinite forces, but infinite forces cannot be generated, but large forces can be generated, and large forces will bend and break the mechanism. So that is Good. And then we go to acceleration. Okay. So again, I plot the, the acceleration for the our 20, 20 station mechanism. And there is something in these accelerations that I don't like. 
are actually two things. The first thing I don't like is that uh, this is actually correct calculation and correct plot, and therefore we are facing a real problem. And what is the other thing I don't like? What do you, you don't like in this picture for accelerations? It starts and ends at non-zero, non -zero, which means at one instant, we, according to our modeling, okay, we have a journal bearing and therefore zero velocity and zero acceleration of the star wheel, and then in the next instant, we are in the slider crank mode, we still have zero velocity, but we have finite non-zero acceleration, which would suggest that we have somehow managed to increase the force with infinite speed, right? We, are, we have jump in acceleration, so we had no, no force, and suddenly we have finance force which means infinite increase in the force, in the infinite speed of increase in the force. Not possible. Not possible. There is no such thing as, uh, as uh, uh, discontinuous acceleration in reality. Okay? So what happens here, we can see that our mechanism will behave poorly at higher speeds. Because mathematical modeling, assuming that everything is rigid, requires infinite increase in, in forces and jump in acceleration. By the way, the derivative of this thing, of the acceleration, is called the jack. Okay, so funny name, isn't it? So, so the third derivative of position, which is a derivative of acceleration, is called the jack. So we will have an infinite jack at the entry and exit from the slot. But infinite jack is impossible in reality, which means that our system trying to emulate this behavior will generate large dynamic loads at the entry and exit from the slot. Okay, so there will be fast increase in contact forces. Not infinite, not, but fast. Okay, so this can cause vibrations, this will cause way, this will cause many other, uh, uh, many other unfavorable behaviors, and therefore the conclusion is that this kind of a mechanism cannot be used for high-speed applications. If the application is low speed, as we have seen on the video, all these aspects of infinities some, somehow dissipate and go away. But if we try to use the mechanism which theoretically behaves as having infinite jakes at high speed application, it will break down, very, break up very quickly. Okay? So for high speed applications, we must have continuous accelerations. Okay? And therefore finite jakes. So, Remember this. Unfortunately, I am not covering um, any more CAM follower systems because there is no space in the unit for it, but if you ever encounter the need to, to work with CAM follower systems or consider CAM follower systems, the dynamic, dynamic considerations directed at uh, minimizing Jake and therefore improving the smoothness of the behavior and therefore dynamic behavior of the system are of paramount importance in that, in that area. Now, we can, where are we? We can do the same, the same calculations for a, for a four-station uh, Geneva wheel. So the, the one that we saw in the pictures. Okay, so not 20 stations, but four stations. So everything the same, except n now is equal to four. 
So the calculation for, uh, for the position is here and can be confirmed to be probably correct. This is the velocity, which you may note is a bit smoother at the ends. Okay, so it is not that steeply arriving at zero. And, uh, and we should see the, the demonstration, the, the, the result of this at the acceleration plot. So you see acceleration plot now looks better. Still it's discontinuous and still you have, strictly speaking, in infinite jack, but this jump in acceleration is smaller, which suggests that the Geneva wheel with lower number of stations have better, has better dynamic behavior than the Geneva wheel with higher number of stations. Okay?